China's electric vehicle market is huge. In fact, it's the largest in the world. And over the past decade or so, we've seen Chinese automakers go from small, underpowered, low-speed vehicles to highway-capable cars complete with semi-autonomous driver assistance capabilities. Part of that transition has been thanks to changes in Chinese government incentives designed to promote highway-capable, long-range vehicles. And while that change itself resulted in some lesser quality companies disappearing, it's also helped give rise to a number of companies building some truly great electric vehicles. Companies like Xpeng, a Guangzhou-based firm which was founded just six years ago but has celebrated the production launch of its second all-electric model the 2020 Xpeng P7 sport sedan. And today, I'm going to take a look at it. But before I do, let's just give you a little background on Xpeng. Founded in 2014, the company has enjoyed backing from a variety of different investors, including Alibaba, Foxconn and IDG Capital. Like many Chinese companies, it may be initially launching its vehicles for a Chinese audience, but does have plans to expand elsewhere, with an American subsidiary already existing called xmotors.ai. Like Tesla, Xpeng's vehicles are built with a heavy focus on internet connectivity, autonomous drive features, long-range capabilities and high performance. It even uses a similar style of battery cell to Tesla with its first vehicle, the compact G3 SUV, using Samsung 18650 battery cells, which is the same form factor cells that were used in Model S and Model X. And that's no surprise because Xpeng has used Tesla's open source patent agreements in the past to, to help it develop its vehicles. It's not clear just how many patents are used or where the agreements were in using it. Remember, Tesla doesn't make patents freely available, but rather expects the automakers using them to have a reciprocal quid pro quo agreement when it comes to technology. As for Xpeng's first car, the G3, it has, to date, sold just shy of 17,000 units, at least according to the data that I've been able to find online. So it's clear the company is already pretty established, given its age. Part of that volume construction, though, was possible because of the way the G3 was made. Rather than produce them in-house, Xpeng's G3s were built for the company by Heimer Automotive, which is a specialist in vehicle production, producing vehicles for third parties. But what we're really here to talk about today is the P7, a car we first saw last year at the Shanghai Auto Show, and which at the time Xpeng said would debut in the second quarter of 2020. We're now in that second quarter, and as promised, today was the car's production debut. Because of the impact of COVID-19, Xpeng's launch event was suitably online, but because of a bit of forethought on Xpeng's part, its media team has made sure that plenty of B-roll is available to accompany the official launch, which is very different to most Chinese companies. Design first. Although the P7 has traditional rearview mirrors, the company is claiming a drag coefficient of 0.236, made possible, I'm sure, by a sleek and slippery design that's becoming the de facto shape for all efficient cars, including flash door handles and a cam tail. Being electric, there's no need for an upper grille, although there does look to be an under bumper air intake area for the power electronics, which is similar to most modern EVs. This is all built on top of an 80.9 kilowatt hour battery pack available as either a rear wheel drivetrain or an all electric drivetrain. As there are multiple variants for the P7 with different ranges, I'll come to that in a second, it's not clear if there are multiple battery pack options. However, I can tell you from the press release that the P7's battery pack is supplied by Cattle and is built using a, quote, high-density, slim-profile prismatic battery pack, offering a claimed energy density of 170 watt-hours per kilogram. I should note that prismatic cells are also what Tesla is using for Model 3. When paired with a powerful rear-wheel drive configuration in what Xpeng is calling long range, a claimed 568 kilometers are possible on the NEDC test cycle. Opt for the super long range variant, and Xpeng says you can get between 656 kilometers and 706 kilometers. I should note though, as I always do at this point, that the NEDC range test standards are notoriously optimistic and have been superseded in most countries that used to use them by the more realistic WLTP test cycle. This means the Xpeng P7 is likely to, at the best, 
managed between 75 and 85 percent of the quoted range in the real world. But that NEDC test score does put it ahead of every other electric car in China right now. On the same test basis, the Tesla Model S long range gets 660 kilometers per charge. Interestingly, there is no range quoted for the high-performance all-wheel drive variant, but XPen says it will accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.3 seconds. This is possible, says XPeng, because of a new IGBT module inside the power electronics that can deliver 580 amps to the motors for a total of up to 40 seconds continuous supply. It also claims the new power electronics system give it up to 97.5% efficiency at the wheels. I've obviously got no way to test this, so it's just a spec at this point. Charging the Xpeng P7 from a GB-T charge port is said to take 28 minutes from 30% to 80%, while 10 minutes of charging when empty should yield 120 kilometers of range. Bearing in mind the caveats I put in earlier about NEDC test cycle figures. How does that compare to the competition? Well, pretty favorably. That 120 kilometers in 10 minutes would, I'm going to assume, result in about 100 kilometers of real world range in the same time, which equates to 10 kilometers per minute. That's slower than the fastest of charging, but certainly no slouch. Inside Xpeng P7's interior features a display layout that's quickly becoming the industry norm with a fully digital display in front of the driver that extends out to a touchscreen center console. From the videos I've seen, the interface looks pretty standard for a high-end luxury car with plenty of user customizable features. But where the Xpeng P7 shines, I think, is its assistive technologies. I'll come to the driver assistance packages in a second, but inside the cabin, there's a camera facing the driver, which is used for facial recognition and personalization of the car similar to looking at your phone to get it to unlock. This is all powered with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor running Xpeng's own operating system, currently version 2.0. It and the rest of the car's systems, as you might expect, can receive over-the-air software updates. There's also what Xpeng says is a first for an automotive industry, a natural language user interface that appears pretty contextually aware for once and can continually listen and react to commands. So no more waiting for the car to figure out what you just said before you say something else. Of course, as usual, when I've not had the chance to see the car firsthand, I'm only able to go on what the press releases say, so I'm hopeful that I'm able to test this out for myself when social distancing is but a distant memory. There's nothing here that makes my spidey senses tingle. I'm also very keen to test out what must be the Xpeng P7's party trick, its level 3 advanced driver assistance features, which is fitted with a slew of 12 ultrasonic sensors, 5mm wave radars, 14 cameras, and that makes up what Xpeng claims is the only 360-degree multi-perception system. A multi-perception, of course, referring to multiple different types of sensors all working in unison. The cameras themselves cover 180 degrees field of view, while the millimeter wave radar, one at each corner, gives the car an ability to see more than a claimed 200 meters in every direction. At the heart of all of this is the NVIDIA Drive AGX Xavier system on a chip that we first saw unveiled at CES 2018. Designed for low power consumption, in this case 30 watts, the computer takes in GPS positioning and other data to process real-time map data to ensure that the car is where it should be, a technique that is by now becoming quickly standard among automakers with autonomous vehicle tech. This makes an autopilot-like navigation-guided pilot, offers traffic-like recognition assistance, and what Xpeng is saying, memory parking for parking lots. Again, I've not had a chance to test this out, but I'm hoping I can in the future. I should also note here at this point that Xpeng is currently embroiled in a year-long dispute with Tesla over some of Tesla's autonomous vehicle technology. Tesla alleges a former employee stole intellectual property and took it to Xpeng when he left Tesla's employment. Xpeng disputes this and frankly, I'm not going to delve into this one in this video because I'd like to address that when I've had some time to look over the material. Just like you'll note that we haven't yet mentioned the whole Nikola Motor versus Tesla court case over designs. 
Court cases aside though, that's the Xpeng P7. It's a very good looking car that I can imagine getting some significant attention worldwide. And if it delivers on performance and range, as well as technology, I think it'll gain some serious traction in its home market, as well as other markets around the world. The one thing I haven't mentioned that might give it an edge? Price. After subsidies, the Xpeng P7 will start at the equivalent of US$32,442 when deliveries begin in June. Even its high-end variant will cost just shy of US$48,000 equivalent, much less than a Model 3. And at that price, if it can deliver, I think it could be a serious contender in the mid-priced electric vehicle market. Don't you? That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.